Okay, so we're back. We just talked about in the last video, uh, point slope form and slope intercept form and graphing from those uh, where we have a point and a slope or where we just have a, a, a starting value and a slope, a, a y-intercept and a slope. Now we're gonna talk about some word problems, how these go with this. So first of all, as we transition to word problems, um, I want to be sure that you would do, do a good job defining variables. Um, so that's gonna be the step one of every word problem, define a variable. When you're asked by your teachers next year, what do you do with a word problem? Step number one, step number one, define your variables. So um, you don't have to use X and Y. I'm gonna use X and Y repeatedly here, but you don't have to. Um, but you do need a variable that represents one thing is going to be one thing it represents is going to be like something that's independent, something that's the input. Very often, that's time. When time is in your problem, you probably need to use time as your input. Um, as your output, might be things that are like totals or results or uh, you know things that result from uh, whatever's happening here, or something that's dependent on time. Or the independent thing might be some repeating value. So anyway. Um, X is going to be independent variable, very often time. Y is going to be the dependent variable, very often totals or results. So let's take a look at the first problem here. Um, and we're going to find variables first. Example, a balloon rises freely in the air. At three seconds, it is at 400 feet high. So it's 400 feet high at three seconds. And at five seconds, it's 525 feet high. Um, so it seems like in those two seconds, it's risen 125 feet. Um, write an equation to model the balloon's height over time. Okay, now, first of all, we have to have our variables down. So I'm gonna say, I'm gonna put that small in, in pen, pen here, x is equal to time the balloon has been rising. Notice that I didn't just say that X is equal to seconds, right? I gave it a description that's based on the problem, right? Y is equal to the height of the balloon. Okay, now, in order to do an equation here, um, it's a little tricky because um, we don't know the slope, do we? So you need to know the slope in order to do um, either of these two types of equations. You need to know the slope. You need to know the slope here. You need to know the slope here. So we need to know the slope. So the slope in this case is going to be um, y1 minus y2 over x1 minus x2. Uh, but realize that these two values are actually points in our equation. So we have, um, we have the points, let's see, we have 3, 400 as a data point, and we have 5, 525 as another data point. Notice our x and y values are our, are our x and y values that came out of the problem. So in order to do our slope, we need to subtract our y values and divide them by the subtraction of our x values. So we have 125 over two as our slope, right? And because those don't divide, you can leave them just like that. Then, we also have two different points given to us. So we can use point slope form. So we might write the equation y minus 400 equals 125 divided by two, that's the slope, times x minus three. And that would give us one possible equation for this line. And that would be a totally acceptable answer. Realize that some people might write y minus 525 equals 125 over two times x minus five. And that would totally be fine as well. Either one of those answers is totally fine, okay? Um, y will represent the height of the balloon over time. Whatever value you put in here for x, you'll find the height when uh, you put in that value for x. For example, if you wanna know where the balloon was at zero seconds, you could put a zero over here, all right? And you'll find out that the height was probably not zero. Um, but you can do that on your own. So let's go on to the next problem. So that's modeling an equation from a word problem. In this case, we used, we used point slope, the, the point slope style equation. We had points, 
We had points, we figured out a slope from those points, and we wrote an equation. All right. the, second, the second problem here, the example says, write an equation to model the total cost of renting a car if the car costs $35 per day and has a fee of $10 that's paid once. Or a different car uh, is, costs $40 per day and has no other fees. So again, we have to do our variables. Um, I'm gonna do the variables uh, up here. I have a little room over here. So um, X and Y. So X is gonna be the number of days we're renting the car. Number of days renting the car. All right, that's the thing that's kind of moving along that's generating, um, that's generating our expense. Right, write an equation to model the total cost. So the total cost is what's being modeled. That is the Y, that's the outcome, All right? So the total cost is a reflection, if you will, of the number of days you rent. You need to know the number of days you're renting in order to figure out the total cost. So the number of days renting has to be your independent variable and your total cost is the result of that. All right, so let's see. Our total cost, you would figure by multiplying 35 times the number of days rented, 35 times the number of days rented, and then adding the fee of $10 to it, All right? So these equations in, um, in slope intercept form are pretty easy to write. You have an initial cost and something that happens repeatedly. The something that happens repeatedly, the $35 needs to be multiplied because it happens repeatedly, literally, multiplication is repeated addition, you're gonna be adding up these $35 multiple times depending on how many days you rent the car. Whereas the addition of $10 happens once, that's kind of an initial fee. So this becomes an initial value and this becomes a repeated value, All right? Now, in the $40 per day rental scenario with no other fees, there is no initial value. So we just have Y equals 40X for this example, All right? So there's two examples of point slope form, um, or sorry, of slope intercept form. Here's one example of point slope form. Uh, you can see these are more complicated. You can see why people really like uh, y equals mx plus b. If you have an equation like that, you should use it. You should use that simple equation. Um, but sometimes it doesn't come that way that easily. So um, we'll have these as well. All right, I hope that gets you started with uh, word problems. Uh, we will be doing lots of word problems in the next couple of weeks.